Morning. Uganda's foremost university marks 100 years this year. It's a true testament of resilience and patient success of academics in not just Uganda, but Africa at large. But far too often, the university ranked in the big leagues of academia grapples with its funding, its identity and culture, while it's the university boss of educating the finest from heads of states to scientists. It has also been the home of rampant and recurring strikes. While its praise singers allowed it for groundbreaking innovation, critics dent it for inaccessible and costly tuition. Tonight we talk about the legacy of Uganda's oldest university, Makerere. On the spot as Vice Chancellor, Professor Barnabas Nawangwe. Professor Barnabas Nawangwe, thank you so much for having honored our invitation. A warm welcome to you. Thank you, and good evening, viewers. Makere University is marking 100 years, and uh, mm -hmm. it started in 1922, I think, as a Tekken constitution with only 14 students. But now you have gone on to impact the world with the, quite a number of your alumni serving humanity across the globe, and tens of thousands of students on the hill. What a journey that has been. You are right. When the people who thought about set, uh, establishing Makere University, they never knew the impact the university would have across the world. With 14 students who were doing masonry and carpentry, they were all in the Kansas and they were all barefoot. In 1922? In 1922. 14 of them. And whose motto was, let us be men, because they were all men. The university has definitely transformed in miraculous ways, becoming one of the finest universities in the world one of the largest on the African continent, and definitely one of the best, not just in Africa, but in the whole world. So yes, the university has had a very good... I, I want in this discussion, Professor Barnabas, yeah. to move with you on the journey of Makere University, and we're gonna to touch on the good, the bad, and the ugly yeah. of this university. Yeah. And uh, you know, there are not many institutions in Africa that can celebrate having survived for a hundred years. So it's congratulations to Makere. A hundred years, you are in a league of your own, perhaps an exclusive club of very few institutions here in Uganda that, apart from religious institutions, that can boast having survived a hundred years. So that's a milestone. Indeed, a great milestone. And uh, it is a legacy, it is a great legacy that this university, it has gone through a lot, as you have said, but it has survived even in the most difficult con uh, situations in, uh, in the history of the university. And there is that Makerere spirit which makes it always come back and come on top. And we really must be uh, grateful to the pioneers of this great institution. When you talk about the Makerere spirit, mm -hmm. I don't think sometimes it comes back. Because I want to take you, Professor Barnabas, to the golden era of Makere University. Some people talk of the golden era. I don't know whether you believe that the time that Makere University was at its, you know, at its finest ever. And, and people say the 1960s, um, you know, the days of Professor Ali Mazrui, Professor Mamudani, when he just, uh, as, when he was uh, still there, but at the time when he was uh, uh, not head of, of faculty like now, that students could actually miss a meal to go and book a seat in the main hall because there's going to be an, an intellectual discourse that they cannot dare to miss. That fire for getting knowledge is gone with the wind. That is not uh, quite correct. The fire in the 60s was different from the fire now. I do believe that Makere now is at its best. We are addressing... What would the current vice chancellor of a university say? Anyway. No, I <laughs> let me tell you why I'm saying so, mm -hmm. and then you will judge whether I'm saying it because I'm now the vice chancellor. The, in the 60s, the main issues being addressed were political issues. Africa has moved on since then. Uganda has moved on. There are now issues that we must address. We are now talking about things like climate change. We are talking about things like food security. 
We are talking about the population explosion that we are experiencing. Professor, Those Nawa, are issues do you that believe the fact that mm. there are seem to have been hunger for knowledge and education and, and intellectual prowess at Makiri University in the 60s and 70s that when you organized a, a lecture at the main hall, students would probably even miss their meal to come and attend that lecture. Can you find the same hunger today? You find the same hunger in innovation, which is now our main focus. I am sure this, of course, the, the situation is different. We are now addressing issues which are very different, and that's why we are talking about innovation. We are trying to address the issues that are challenging our development at the moment. And those are the issues that I, to I talked about. And so, we are emphasizing research and innovation. At that time, it was mainly human resource and debates and all that, but those are not the issues that are now threatening our development. The issues that are threatening Africa's development are the ones I talked about. The issues yeah. affecting and threatening Africa are issues of, of bad leadership, of poor leadership. And, and Makerere really should, have, should be the center where leaders, when they are churned out, are leaders who are refined and can lead and, and, and be exemplary. So I do not think that you can move away from, from humanities and, and, and such uh, uh, academia and go only into innovations and leave about leadership. And I, and forget we, leadership. We are not moving away from the humanities. The humanities are part of the innovation. The humanities also have to innovate themselves. And they have done that. And they also are addressing. So when you are talking about food security, it is not just about agriculturists. It is also about the social scientists, about the lawyers, it's about uh, people doing education. It is everybody. Everybody makes their input into that general theme of food security. So uh, what is bad leadership? Bad leadership begins right from the grassroots. And so we have been training leaders, and I believe that the reason that we are making progress as a country, however little some people may say it is, is basically because we are training good leaders who are doing all this. So we are not leaving the humanities behind. They are part and parcel of the agenda to reinvent Makerere and also develop our country. I have uh, stumbled on a document that, I think a government document, uh, mm -hmm. somebody was saying that, yes, we are producing many graduates and, and, uh, and that we could also be having a problem of unemployment in Uganda, but also our graduates are unemployable. In fact, when they get out of the university, they need to be retooled. I have heard that argument because people say uh, the students or graduates are unemployable, that's why they are not getting... Or you jobs. hear that, right? Yes. But that is not really the, the, the problem. The problem is there are no jobs. So, so there, are two, there are two problems, Professor yeah. Nawangwe. Yes. That whereas we don't have jobs in Uganda and Africa, even those who are getting out of the university are even unemployable. No. All the jobs that are available have all been filled. That's why <laughs> there are no vacancies. And they are being filled by people who are actually doing a good job. The real problem for us is the lack of jobs. And that's one of the things we have to address and which we are trying to address through innovation and spin out of uh, uh, spin off of, of companies and so on. So that is the real issue we have to address. This uh, argument that uh, the people are unemployable is really misleading. Because there are actually no jobs. And it is these people we are training that should create those jobs. I've heard yeah. the cries of the employers mm. that these days they are not, they are meeting people who are so different from the graduate of 20 years ago. That the, the, the people you are sending them are not ready. These are them, they, they are the ones who are hiring. They are the ones in, who are sitting in interviewing rooms and, and, and talking to the people that, that you are sending them. But also amongst them, amongst them, in the same year, in the same lot, are people who are, are f the, some of the finest. So why do we see this kind of disparity that is so shocking? I don't think that is new. The very people who are saying the graduates <laughs> who are being said to them are not prepared. We are told the same thing 60 years ago. What, what, 
Is that so? Yes, because when you come out of university, for example, let's just say you are going to work in a factory. Experience is gained on the job. For us, what we are training you is to have the basics. So that even when you go there, you can learn quickly what you are supposed to do. It is very, really unreasonable for anybody to expect that somebody coming out of a university the following day must know all the corners and all the switches and everything. No. The experience is gained on the job. And that is a question which has been there since the, I mean, 60 years, 100 years ago. So now, yeah. you have a rich alumni. Mm -hmm. I wonder what effort has been made to attract those the, 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 the alumni of Makerere to come back to the alma mater and give back. Because if you just tap into that resource, Professor Nawangwe, I mean, you wouldn't even lack funds because the, the alumni are all over the world in key positions and places of influence across the globe. They need to come back to the alma mater. We are celebrating 100 years, as you are aware, and one of the things that we are trying to do is to develop our database of the alumni. We already have a database of more than 300,000 alumni, and those are the ones we have captured so far. I believe we have close to 500,000 living alumni. These, as you say, are working all over the world. We have had alumni events in Kenya, we had, we had alumni events in Kigali, and we had alumni events in San Francisco. In San Francisco, the UNA Convention actually became a celebration of Makerere at 100. And when we asked who went through Makerere, three quarters of the audience, which was more than a thousand people, say they came from Makerere. They started singing the Makerere anthem, and they started saying, we want to give back to our university. Of course, they were saying those same problems. How come we don't get information, we don't know how to do it, but we now have developed a platform through which anybody anywhere in the world can contribute to Makerere University for a cause of their choice. If they want to the money to go to the renovation of their Hall of Radiance, it will go there. If they want the money to go to the renovation of their building where they studied, it will go there. If they want to support the research that we are talking about, it will go there. So there are, there are, there are options on the platform and people choose where to, to, to donate. Okay, before I, I, I continue hounding you more, perhaps the, uh, the alumni, the people of Uganda, and all, all those watching us here in Uganda, all over the world, would want to know how you want to celebrate these 100, 100 years, your centenary celebrations. W what are the milestones you want to, 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 to touch and uh, so that you can say, okay, we have moved a, a, a journey for 100 years? I think uh, we can very briefly go through the history of Makerere University. And you see the milestones that we have gone through. As, we, as, as I said, we started as a technical school. Two years later, we introduced medicine, and uh, a few years later, agriculture and fine art and others. And uh, it was all very technical and uh, uh, subjects, not degree programs. In the, th in the late 30s, 1937, uh, that's when now the government thought we should do, uh, become an institution that offers, say, degrees. But that again didn't happen until around 1943. And we started offering degrees of the University of London. And at that time, we were really just training human resources to address government needs. And it went on until we became the University of East Africa in 1963 and in 1970 when we became an independent national university. All that time, we have been really addressing the issue of human resource for the East African region. It is not until maybe the 90s that we started saying we must also do research to address the issues uh, that affect our development. So the university has gone through quite a few, uh, a few stages and uh, we celebrate that because as you are aware, uh, for a very long time, the entire public service in East Africa was produced by Makerere University. Uh, currently, the majority of the public servants are still Makerere alumni. And so we have had that journey of creating the basic human resource to develop our region. And we cannot, uh, I mean, uh, uh, 
overemphasize the importance of all that because it is these people who have actually built this region. Apart from the political leaders, the 50s were really about the debate for independence. And that's why you see that we brought people that, bo that fought for independence in Yerere in Tanzania, Milton Obote and uh, Edward Mutesa uh, in Uganda, and uh, the Kivakis in Kenya. They were all from Makere. So there has been a journey, human source, political independence, political development, and Look now. At a, for a university professor, Nawangwe, that yes. produced presidents like Mwai Kibaki of Kenya, hmm. presidents like uh, uh, Julius Nyerere of Tanzania, mm. President like Benjamin Mukapa, President like Dr. Milton Obote, uh, Sir Edward Mutesa, uh, the former President of, of, of South Sudan, first President of South Sudan, Dr. John Garang. It's a, a university that really is ought to be far than where it is now. In which sense we are, <laughs> we are quite so far. Is, 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 is that it where you are? That's it. That's no, no, where no. you want to be. This is it. We could we could have been even higher. This is what I mean. But remember, there have been uh, problems in the past, which retarded the university's development. And let me go back, <coughs> far back. Of course, maybe that did not affect the progress of the university as far as the, uh, academic excellence is concerned. But the university has had some laws in its uh, uh, history, including, for example, the assassination of Katikiro Nsivira in 1945 for signing a document that uh, allowed the government to expand Makere University. Okay? So there have been laws like that. The mother of uh, our first vice chancellor of the first, as, a first, as a national university, uh, Frank Kalimuzo, after whom we have named uh, one of our new buildings. Uh, that of course created a, a, a lot of fear in people. Half of our faculty fled. Well, maybe not half, more than half of them fled. And they did not come back until after uh, the, the political situation improved, after very many years. So yes, uh, the university could probably have been even uh, in a much better position now had we not had these very low moments of, uh, of our history. You talk about innovations and of course research and, and the university should also be, uh, ha should be focusing on research and innovation because that's what universities do. But, but what, are, what are these areas that you're so proud of in, in the area of innovation? I remember when you went into the electric car uh, and, and I thought, and quite a lot of money was put in that, in that innovation. It's a good thing. But is that what Uganda needs today? If we go into making these electric cars, are we able to compete in the world with those who have better economies of scale, those who have done it for the last 30 years, or we could innovate in an area where we can beat them and they cannot even dare to compete because we have many things in our favor? Let me tell you. Yes, sir. By comparing with a country which was like us in the 60s, South Korea. When South Korea started building cars, they were probably worse off than our Kira EV. That's very true. South Korea yeah. wa was benchmarking in Uganda in 1960. Exactly. So it's Singapore and Malaysia. Exactly. They are now the so-called Asian Tigers. And nobody could believe that Korea would become one of the largest uh, uh, manufacturers and exporters of cars at that time. But now... Uh, at that time, in the 60s, the GDP of Korea was lower than the GDP of Uganda. But Korea now is the 11th biggest economy in the world, with 50 million people. Why do we think that we cannot do what they did? What the young people who came up with the idea of Kira Motors did was to unlock our intellectual slavery to show that we can do everything that everybody does and maybe even better so i don't want to believe that we do not have the capacity to do exactly or even more than what south korea has done we can do it because the brains are there we even have more resources than south korea has they don't have iron. We have depots of the best iron ore in the world here. Okay. 
we now have electricity. So it is just a question of our mental, our mindset. We need to have a proper mindset to say, yes, we can do this just like the other people. I, I know, I, I love them, I, and, yeah. and on what was produced is beautiful, and, yeah. and it's good, and, and, and it's good for Uganda, but I'm talking about, uh, you have a, a group of students who can show what can be done, but at the end of the day, be a product that is going to come out may not compete with the products that have, have flooded the market because the others are enjoying the economies of scale. Yet, all human beings will need to eat. We produce organic food here. If you innovated more in agriculture, in my view, and put more emphasis, like you put the emphasis on Kira, the dividends, in my view, can be more and be felt by everyday Ugandan. And the, f the food we produce here, North, South Korea and Japan and other countries will never, because God has already favored, it in, favored us in some way. I'm thinking if you had shed a light in an area where Uganda can compete, and no one else can even dare to come in our, in our lane because everything is in our favor, probably would be far by now. The Kira EV was prominent because it is a unique product, because very few people expected that <laughs> you could manufacture a car in Uganda. That's why everybody got to know about it. But we are not just about cars only. There is a lot of research going on in medicine and coming out with products which are being used by the whole world. There is a lot of research going on in agriculture, in the issue in the area of crop improvement, improvement of our livestock and the and the, the health of our livestock. There is a lot of research going on in the, the humanities, conflict resolution and issues like that. A lot of research is going on in the uh, economics and management. So there is a lot of research going in there, but the products there don't hit the newspapers like <laughs> the Kira EV did. I'll tell you, for example, there is a, a product from uh, the College of I know there's a great work in food science, technology. Exactly. That but let me begin with, yes. the, with the medicine. The researchers in the College of Medicine came up with the, a product where maybe they call it a therapy uh, called the nevarpin which prevents the uh, tr uh, the transmission of uh, HIV from a mother to the baby mother to child mother to child mm -hmm. that therapy is being used all over the world but it was <laughs> it was made here and uh, uh, it never hit the, the headlines because it is not the kind of thing that will hit headlines. The tuberculosis kit, which was invented here also in the School of Medicine, is being used all over the world. And there are our IDI, the Infectious, Infectious Diseases Institute, is the top research institution on HIV AIDS anywhere in the world. And what they are doing is being used all over the world. If you go to agriculture, I don't know if you have heard of the Movende goats. Yes. There was a breeding of the Movende goat, which is very similar, I think, to the South Boa Africa. goats, the South African goats. It was done in our labs here at Makerere. We now have our labs which are able to manufacture vaccines. We did not have that before. We did not have that uh, before the COVID-19, but COVID-19 woke us up. And government gave us money through Preside to modernize our lab uh, laboratories to be able to do research even in those very complicated areas. There is a lot of research going on crop improvement in agriculture. Our researchers together, I think with the researchers from, from Naro, there was a famine, I remember, in eastern Uganda where, where uh, quite a few people died uh, about 15 years ago, and we didn't know what to do. But these researchers came up with what we call drought-resistant cassava. There have been several droughts in eastern Uganda since then, but there has never been a famine. So <laughs> we are doing research that directly impacts the people. Those are just few of the examples. If I told you that we now have a research fund from the government where even with the first call, we got out more than 200 innovations that could be commercialized in all areas, in agriculture, in medicine, in engineering. So we are doing research that 
uh, impacts our economy. And uh, a lot of these products, by the way, on the shelves in the supermarkets. But of course, we, the, the people who spin out these companies uh, do not necessarily write that this was uh, developed at Makere University. But a lot of these products are on the shelves of the supermarkets. You know, uh, the other day, uh, if I, I remember reading a document, I think that was written by Professor, again, Mamudani. Uh, mm -hmm. I think he. He, co he, s he says, scholars in the marketplace, the dilemma of neoliberal reform at Makere University. He seemed to have argued that the university has put so much emphasis on money and forgetting the academic or the scholarly role. W do you agree with him that there has been, in, the, in some years, the hunger to look for money, uh, and then that hunger for the university to look for money, in a way, has stifled probably even the innovation that could have been more. What, what do you, how do you respond to such? No, it was true. It was true at that time. You know that uh, there were the so-called structural adjustment programs of the World Bank, okay. which basically discouraged the uh, African governments from uh, investing in higher education and encouraging investment only in the, uh, basic education. That had a tremendous effect on uh, African universities. And that's why we, you see that we introduced these private programs, the expansion of numbers beyond what we could manage, and of course affecting quality. So it is true that uh, what Mamdad was saying was, was true, it was happening. But since uh, that time, the government, for example, has taken over most of the payroll, because that's where most of the money goes in a university. The government now pays most of the salary, and we only contribute a small portion. So that has reduced the pressure on trying to come up with big numbers. Actually, right now, the strategy of the university is to reduce the numbers we have from almost 40,000 to 25,000 by within the next 10 years. That's our strategy. But you still have structures and facilities that are supposed to support about 5,000 people and you are into 40,000. You are still having big numbers. No, it's not true. Uh, the structures that supported 5,000 people were a very small university. If you, I think at the time you were at the let university, me, me, we already had big structures. But before that, when we had 2,000, 5,000, everything was small bungalows everywhere. Makerere now has expanded in this academic space, okay? Laboratories and the, and the lecture rooms. Over the last 30 years, I think the space has grown by more than 300 percent. So, yes, we still you are still, we can, we, you're still you're still you're, st you're still overcrowded. You still have crowds. That's why I'm saying we are reducing the numbers. We are really not overcrowded now because there has been a. If, big you, if you're talking about you want to reduce the numbers from 40,000 to 25,000, you want 15,000 students off campus. Reduce the number. Then you know the pressure that you are facing right now. We are because of the numbers. We are doing the reduction not because of overcrowding. We are doing the reduction because we want to become a more research-led university. If you are more research-led, you need to have more graduate students than undergraduate students. That's the reason we are reducing, not because we are overcrowded. If you come to Makere So now, you want to have what, what percentage of graduate students? At least 30%. 30%? Yes, at least 30 percent. By, by 2030, we want to have at least 30 percent of our students as graduate students. If we can get even a higher percentage, so much the better. So, but you, you want to be a research-led university, and, and that's what you aspire to be, but that, is, that should have been the, your, your role number one as a university. I said the more research led. <laughs> we, <already, laughs> we are already research led. We are, we are ranked number two in research in Africa. We are ranked among the top in clinical research in the whole world and in the other areas of research. So it is not that we are not doing, we are actually doing a lot of research. But we think we can do even more and be more useful to our country. If we do more research, there are more innovations. Uh, these innovations are being turned into products, uh, going into our economy, employing the large number of young people that come onto the, uh, the labor market. That's where our strategy and our direction is now. Professor Barnabas, now I'm going to hold on to your point, sir, because 
we are going to take a break and when we come back I'll be asking Professor Nawangwe because we seem to see a deficit of values at the hill what happened we'll be right back Welcome back. You're watching On The Spot. My name is Patrick Amara. My guest tonight is the Vice Chancellor of Makerere University, Professor Barnabas Nawangwe. I'm discussing 100 years of Makerere University. You know, one of the key things a university can do is innovations, but also partnership. So I wonder, you know, and working with the communities, because if you have an innovation, sometimes you want to test it in the community and see how it is working. How are you working with government? How are you working with communities? Whom are you partnering with? Yes, we no longer, actually, I have had people still calling Makere the Ivory Tower. We are no longer an Ivory Tower. We are actually a community-based university now. We are working a lot with the community. I'll give you an example of, again, the College of Health Sciences. They, they, they have, their program is what we call a community-based uh, program. So the students no longer just sit in the classrooms and the labs and go to the hospital. They actually go to the community and practice in, in the community. So they go to Katanga, they go to places like Muvenda, I've seen them in Kisoro and so on. So we are taking our programs and working with the community. If you take, for example, uh, in ag agriculture, we have uh, our center, it's a world center of excellence, which is, which is, whose role is actually crop improvement. And they're making improvements on our indigenous crops which were disappearing, and they are trying to make sure that they come back. And they will come back if the yields from those uh, crops increase, so that the farmers find a reason why they should grow. Isn't them. it a shame that we have innovators, great innovators from Akere in the field of agriculture in the same country in 2022, people are dying of hunger in northeastern Uganda? I don't think that people are dying of hunger there because uh, the people at Makere are not innovating. It is uh, a question of supply. You see, you have a lot of food in another part of the country, and because there is a drought in another part of the country, people are dying. That is not a question of research on, on crop improvement. We have the capacity to feed our country without external uh, a, a, you know, uh, a intervention. And uh, as you have seen, it is uh, being done already just by simply organizing to take food from where it is in abundance to where it is not. So let me get back to my point of <laughs> value addition or crop improvement. I will give you the example of Sogam. Uh, what this center has done is to come up with a variety of Sogam which has five times more yield than the ordinary uh, indigenous crop. Now that means that a farmer who grows that uh, sorghum will get five times as much as they would get mm -hmm. <laughs> from the same acre if they used the indigenous uh, variety. And uh, it now becomes commercial. So that's why now you see that uh, farmers in West Nile, farmers in Karamoja actually, are taking on sorghum and working with Nile breweries and supplying to Nile breweries. And definitely their incomes just become five times as much as they were, were getting before. We have got uh, another very interesting innovation uh, in uh, southwestern Uganda, uh, which is uh, uh, again sorghum and Irish potatoes. The issue that these researchers are addressing is that the farmers throw away half of their uh, harvest because they are too small to go to the market. Nobody will buy them, the potatoes. Yes. And yet, the, the value of the, of the potato is just the same. But psychologically, people will not buy it. And so they are adding value to this what would be a reject by mixing it with sorghum and uh, coming up with things like cookies and what and which are very tasty and which cost 10 times from the same potato uh, okay which you sell you'll get a value which is 10 times more when it has been turned into this uh, uh, product so yes 
Uh, we, are, we are doing a lot of, of research in that area. There is a lot of research also going in, in uh, even in uh, the College of uh, Natural Sciences. The College of uh, Vet Medicine, we have been working on the anti-tick vaccine, which is a menace for our farmers in livestock. And uh, once that is uh, finally approved by the uh, National Drug Authority, then we can probably say bye-bye to ticks. And they're working, of course, together with their colleagues in, in, in Naro. So uh, those are some of the few examples I can say right now. But every college is involved in research in the area in which they are best uh, you know, uh, suited to do research. And uh, the research is already impacting our society. You know, I, I've, I've seen some people who have excelled in different fields. In fact, I, I saw a, a, a guy who went through my career and now he's a molecular biologist. Somebody is into, is a marine biologist. And, and they're all over the world. And others are engineers, you know, working in uh, reputable organizations. And, and, and other universities, even if you go to Columbia or you go to, to Harvard, there will be this individual, they have their money and then they can fund uh, research in the university, they can give you their funds and yet I know you have the capacity to tap into those individuals whom have gone through the same university Makerere, and God has blessed them and they have their money and perhaps they are willing but it, it appears, uh, with all respect, you have not uh, moved enough to reach the alumni. You, it, because the pool that you have if you tap into it, you wouldn't even think about government. That's true. As I, I have said, we have more than 500,000 living alumni. A lot of them are working in very gainful employment, uh, not just in Uganda here, because, I mean, the, the, the majority of our uh, public servants, uh, business people, and have gone through Makere University, and they have some good money. But there are also those who are working in Kenya, in South Africa, in the United States, everywhere in the world and uh, a lot of them are actually uh, holding very good positions a lot, many of them are business people in the United States and they have very good money uh, but first of all I have to say that uh, um, philanthropy is traditionally an American thing okay even in Europe they are just beginning now to think about philanthropy and they cannot even do it very well so we have that opportunity that we have people that are uh, uh, Ugandans that are living in the United States, so they have lived there, they have seen what is happening. And that's why I'm telling you that when we were in San Francisco, they were saying we all want to contribute in different ways, either by donations or by connecting us to companies and that kind of thing. But definitely there are people who, who, who could do, uh, <coughs> give us uh, very good money. Uh, but I must say that uh, even back home here, mm -hmm. our business community is beginning to give back. I, I will mention his name, although I, had, I don't have his permission. But we have uh, uh, this uh, uh, gentleman now, the, now that I've talked, the name is... Uh, you you've had a change of idea. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's okay. Uh, who, who was the first mm -hmm. to give us money to look for... Um, there's uh, uh, a. It was actually developing the chemicals that produce the testing uh, uh, kits for COVID 19. Okay. He, he gave us money, and not little money. And since him, other people have come on board to fund research that was not happening before but now that we we, we are developing this uh, i think also because we realized as a people we are facing an existential threat exactly. and somebody says why would i have this money yeah. and yet humanity is facing an existential threat yeah. i could give it to somewhere and then maybe we to ha we'll have a fighting chance yes uh, covid 19 gave us a rude shock nobody bothered whether we die or not and that woke all of us up okay and so uh, this Ugandan philanthropist was the first one to come out and give money. Several have started giving money, but many more could give money, but they needed to know what we want to use that money for.
and that's why you have but, created but, but this. Maybe, but maybe you, have, you cannot attract money that much, especially when there has been a lot of agreement on the hill. You, there have been a lot of fights, uh, uh, Professor Nawangwe. Uh, you, know, the, you know, even the position of vice chancellor was almost like a poison to chalice. Whoever gets there, you get entangled, you are mired into a lot of fights. I'm, 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 I'm pleased and I'm surprised that you're holding forth very well. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I, I think that was one of the things that uh, I went out to do, uh, to bring back sanity to the university, because there was a lot of insanity. There was a lot of indiscipline and a lot of entitlement. And it was not helping the university to move forward, to contribute to what it was set up for, contributing to the development of the country. We had to bring back discipline. And of course, they, we have been criticized and in, in, very, in many ways. But I hope that people now appreciate why we did what we did, that the university finally looks stable. For five years, we have not closed for even one day because of a strike. Otherwise, we were closing every semester because the, the students or staff are striking. But for five years, we have not closed. So let, let me, let me, yeah. now that you've talked about strikes, you know, and, and striking, I think, is normal. People expressing themselves. Mm -hmm. But why is it that even five years before, you know, quite, for quite some time, whenever students would want to express themselves in, in a strike or a demonstration, people who have nothing to do with the university in downtown Kikoni, could you, you know, hell will just descend on them, eat their samosas and their, their, their Rolexes and beat them up? And why do we see this kind of indiscipline and lack of integrity to the extent that we saw at the university? Yes, uh, and that's what I'm talking about. I mean, uh, uh, it was uh, really a bad uh, image for the university that uh, students would go and loot the community from which they come <laughs> you know it was uh, ironical hooliganism exactly hooliganism and i've been using the word hooliganism and there are many people who don't want to hear that word but that is what it was we had to fight that hooliganism for the last five years, you have not heard that there is a student who came out of the Makere Gate but to go and look. But just a couple of months back, Professor Nawangwe, yes. uh, he, he, under your administration, a young student was, was denied the opportunity to enjoy the sunshine of the next day. He was killed, stabbed. That is a, a different type of uh, indiscipline. Because of yeah. political contestation at the university. Yes. Uh, now, now, now that is, that is gore. That yes. is grisly. Yes, you're right. That's the most unfortunate thing that uh, has happened in the recent past. And, and that has years. happened under, under, under your leadership? Yes, and we didn't expect that to happen. But uh, remember that uh, uh, there is a lot of political interference by pol uh, external forces in the affairs of the university. And they had influenced so much that uh, students who are seeking leadership all must campaign on uh, political, uh, using political colors, and they, they become acrimonious, and they even begin fighting. Uh, and uh, we said this should not continue. It was a very unfortunate incident. Actually, the university has been stable all the time until you reach elections. And when you reach elections, then you begin getting this kind of uh, turmoil. We said we must put a stop to this because Leadership is not about party colors. When you are training leaders, you are training leaders to be re leaders in every way in society. It is not just about political leadership. But even if it was political leadership, why must people kill each other? And so we are reviewing, we are uh, reviewing the, the, the Guilty Constitution. Uh, there is a a, a constitutional review commission which is set up for students who are going to make a recommendation to council on what changes should be made in the guilty constitution so that we remove this kind of indiscipline even in the student politics does it need does it need a constitution for you to instill values among the students <laughs> it is a, the student leadership is basically political and it is based on a constitution and we identified the gaps 
in that constitution which are leading to this kind of situation. And that's what we are addressing. Does it come uh, down to the kind of children we're sending you to? We're we bringing to you? Because, uh, I mean, uh, I don't know how to use this, but if it is garbage in, garbage out. If we, haven't, if we, the parents, have not sent you the children that we have uh, nurtured well, there's little you can do at the university. Can well, uh, <laughs> we cannot definitely transform minds of people who have already reached there and they have gone through all this education system. And it is unfortunate, as you say, I mean, for several years I have not heard about violent strikes at a university, but we have children burning schools. And those are the same people who are coming to the university. It's a reflection of what, of what the nation is. Well, it's not just here in Uganda. It is, it is, it is uh, in very many parts of, of the world. Uh, I think it is about uh, the, the cultural changes that are taking place and the uh, problems of drugs, which we must fight as a country, by the way. We should not take it lightly. Drugs are there in schools. The drugs Do you are have there a problem of drugs in Makere? We definitely have. How can there be drugs in the schools and they're not in Makere? So we have a problem, and that is part of the problem that we are addressing. It may not be as big as, uh, as maybe in some institutions that we hear about uh, internationally, but definitely there is penetration of drugs in our schools and in our universities, and we must address that head on. We must not wait because it might become too late to deal with it. So now, um, let me look at the issue of uh, renovating the main building because it was gutted by fire. We, we just want to know, I'm sure even those alumni and, and other people would want to know that iconic building of Makerere, uh, whether Professor Barnabas Nawango and your team, you're building it back. And at what level are you? Yes, I want to thank the government. The government gave us all the money that is required to... All the money? All the money that is required to reconstruct the building, the building itself. Of course, we, we are looking now for money to furnish it and the, to retrofit and so on. But we have all the money required to reconstruct it. And uh, it has been designed to be reconstructed to be exactly the same as it was, because that was a demand by our alumni all over the world. I, 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 would, I want to thank you for that, because I was worried that maybe you're going to give us these glossy, glass-looking kind of buildings that we see in Kampala nowadays that have no appeal. In fact, I'm so happy the ministry, the judiciary is putting up a building that has appeal. Otherwise, most of these things look uh, very futuristic, but not appealing. Now I would like to assure all our alumni and the stakeholders that the main building is being reconstructed and it will be reconstructed to look exactly the same as it was externally. Inside it will be modernized and to address uh, uh, those issues that actually led to things like the fire but also to make it more uh, functional uh, as a modern uh, office building. But externally for historical reasons and because it is the icon of, 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 of education in the whole of East and Central Africa, we are reconstructing it to reinstate it the way it was. Okay, I think that's a good thing to hear. But then, what did we lose? Well, of course, we lost uh, property in the fire. We lost uh, documents. Uh, uh, and maybe that's the most important thing, that we lost quite a number of documents. We lost also computers and the other equipment. Uh, uh, but we did not lose any life in the, in, in the fire. And the, the good thing is that we can reconstruct the building the way it was. I, I, I told some people that whatever could not be replaced was not burnt. But whatever could be replaced is what got burnt. So basically you can say... That's, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, uh, that's interesting to hear. Yes. Mm. That whatever could not be replaced was, is, uh, survived. Yes. 
I've seen some um, earthworks, um, you know, earth movers down on, I think, Sir Apollo Kagwa Road, as, as if you're, you're trying to put a perimeter for so building another concrete wall or something. What is going on? We are building a wall around Mackay University. You uh, can say basically we are replacing. I thought there was always a perimeter fence. Exactly. We are replacing the perimeter fence which was there before. Because there used to be a perimeter fence around Mackay University. Uh, but it, it got rusted, it was a metal fence, it got rusted and uh, it, it rotted away. Uh, but we need that wall because uh, we have to ensure the security of uh, our students and staff and also the very expensive equipment and the other facilities that are on the university. So we are reconstructing the perimeter fence. You know, somebody has actually uh, sent me a message, and I think I should read it. Maybe I, I may not read the name. Mm. And he's saying, it is true, graduates of today are unemployable. Mm. And, and this is an executive director of an organization. Mm. And she says, Professor is the cook. We are the consumers of his products. Mm. However, he gets stale ingredients that cannot turn out to be a good meal. <laughs> Your alumni and ED who yeah. is also getting more alumni to work with her and yeah. she thinks you as the cook what you're sending are the only ingredients that can make a good meal no not, she, my, not my wife oh, what uh, <laughs> what the ceo is saying that the ingredients i'm, I'm given to cook <laughs> cannot produce a good meal and i think that's what you are saying we are getting people who already have been uh, affected in a certain way and within the no you cannot use that as an excuse no that's what she's <laughs> saying and, it, uh, and the, the, it is not possible in that very time to change that person. But I must say, I must say that uh, in this plane, by the way, uh, a few, as they say, a few rotten apples mm -hmm. spoil the basket. Yeah. The majority of our students are very disciplined people who are there anxious to learn and go out and serve humanity. But a few, <laughs> just a few, can make the whole uh, community look like, you know, uh, that is the way they are. It is not true. The, the majority of our students are very disciplined, and uh, nowadays they actually themselves fight the indiscipline. Yes. So it is not all hope lost. I, I'm going to open the lines so that you too, wherever you are, you can be a part of this discussion. We're going to show you our WhatsApp line. You can send us your comments or your questions to Professor Barnabas Nawangwe to respond to you. And maybe if you have an issue and maybe you're angry, we understand, but please just keep it civil. Uh, air out your grievance or air out your issue. Or, or you congratulate my career. A hundred years uh, of an institution is not a mean achievement because there are not many institutions that have been running for a hundred years in our country. We're going to take a break and when we come back, I'll be taking your views and your questions. We'll be right back. on the spot. My name is Patrick Amara and my guest tonight is Professor Barnabas Nawangwe, Vice Chancellor of Makerere University and uh, we've reached that point where you have to say uh, to have your say. Uh, you have our numbers on the screen. You can uh, send us your uh, questions or your comments on, on what you know about Makerere, what you have heard from Professor Barnabas Nawangwe say tonight and where uh, Makerere is headed. But let me go back to you Professor Barnabas as they wait for the, for the comments or the questions to come in. Uh, now, 100 years um, have already uh, been achieved and you'll be moving on, but where do you take Makerere next? What, do, what should we expect as you move on? Yes, uh, we are looking at Makerere for the next 100 years, so people have been asking, so what legacy do you want to, to leave uh, at Makerere? And uh, uh, what should Makerere look like in the next 100 years? We want Makerere to be a truly modern research-based university because that's what all the other universities in our category around the world are. They are the ones that have created opportunities for industrialization and industrializ industrialization is actually uh, the cornerstone of development of any country. And so we are going to put emphasis on research 
We are going, as I've said, reduce the numbers of undergraduate students, increase the number of graduate students, because it is those graduate students that actually do the research supervised by their supervisors. You said you want almost 30% uh, percent graduates to reduce the numbers from 40,000 to about 25,000 students, right? Yes. Okay, let me, let me get some views here, coming in from those who are uh, watching tonight. And uh, somebody says, let him tell us about the program of internship at Makerere. It seems the students are not guided. What do you tell them? And uh, what happened to the investigations of people who burnt the, who burnt the ivory tower? When did it get burnt again, even if it is re, uh, renovated? Please uh, tell us, Professor Nawangwe. Well, on internship, I must say that... Uh, uh, as we are all aware, we have had two years of uh, COVID. So there was an interruption, and we changed the way we do internship during the COVID time. But now everything is sort of going back to normal, and we shall go back to the normal programs where our students go out there to, in, to industry, to government offices, to the farms and farms, and uh, they gain experience supervised by the people who actually do the real work. Our supervisors, our uh, professors also go to visit them and they give them the guidance that we give them as academicians. But the real training of our students on internship should be by the people in the industry where the, stu the student has gone. And that one is going, we are going back to that. So yes, there has been that problem, but it is because of uh, COVID-19 that we were not uh, doing the internship the way that people are used to. Okay, let me, uh, let me, let me get more uh, questions for you, Professor. No, uh, but you asked about the ivory tower. Somebody said people burnt. No, yes. the police investigation said the fire was caused by a, an electrical s short circuit. Uh, they ruled out any arson. So nobody went to burn the, 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 the main building. It burnt because of an electrical short circuit. All right. Okay. Uh, point taken there. Somebody says, hi, how, how are you? Thank you for bringing us, Professor Nawangwe. My question is very simple. Makerere students have been electing their leaders. Why is he changing the process that has been there for years? Please don't make us that. Don't do it like that. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you, Kamara. Can you ask the VC, Professor Nawangwe, his thoughts on the current quality of the university education compared to the quality of graduates during the colonial times? Professor Senteza Kajubi, Professor Sawufu Times, and presently, how are the quality of your graduates for engineering, medical, and sciences generally pre presently compared, presently, compared to like 15 years ago and before? This is Emmanuel from Barara. Um, and somebody also said, I'd like to appreciate Professor for his work at the university. Democracy too has been has an element of participation and free expression. Limiting student leaders not to use political flags in election campaigns is not a good idea, given that McKerry has been feeding the nation with many leaders, seemingly looks like a tool of suppression. An example is of all the elections around the region, many issues happen, but it has not stopped the expression through multi party voting. Professor, if you can respond to those, and then I can pick two more or three. Yeah, if I can begin with the last one. Yes. We, we have had elections at Makere since the guild was first established more than 60 years ago. And the, the guild campaigns were never based on the party colors. And some of the best leaders we have produced for this region went through those elections. Mm -hmm. So it is not true that if you don't have party colors, you cannot produce good leaders. That is completely untrue. Uh, secondly, uh, that is connected to the first question. Why are we not holding elections? We have a roadmap to return to the election of the uh, guild leaders. And I believe that within the next one month, we will have held those elections and students can elect their leaders. So that is not an issue. Nobody has uh, said we are scrapping elections. No, we are simply mainstreaming some, thing, some things within the, the Constitution. Now, regarding the quality of our graduates, which graduates 30 years ago produced an electric vehicle? Which ones? Which graduates 30 years ago worked on a vaccine? Which graduate 30 years ago worked on nevarpin? So which graduates have a better quality? Those of now who are producing cars and producing vaccines, or those of 30 years ago 
about whose innovations we don't even know. All right, let me just yeah. maybe uh, pick uh, about five more comments or questions, uh, and that will be it. Um, is it true that Lumumba Hall will go under renovation? I would like to inquire why graduates can't get their transcripts immediately after graduation. And uh, good evening, Professor and viewers. We are thankful for having hosted our Vice Chancellor. Let him get informed that college money for practical sessions, particular case, never comes, or if it does, it comes less late, thus we miss nearly all practicals and field outreach. We are coming out theory best and half backed. Otherwise, he also has achievements. Last, lastly, letting Kuruma be renovated next. And you know, uh, your students are saying they are coming out, uh, uh, coming out half backed. They themselves. <laughs> And th this, what, this is a serious, uh, serious admission, Professor Nawangwe. Um, this is Joshua. Can Makiri University consider insurance for the properties? Imagine a university in this century without insurance for its staff and property. At a cost of only 1% of the cost of the damaged building, we would have saved government and taxpayers' money. Thank you. Imagine that. Insurance, Professor. And uh, somebody says, my name is Timothy. Thank you so much for the great work you are doing at Makerere, one of the beneficiaries of innovation at Makerere, and I have also added my hand in serving humanities in line of extending clean water. Thank you so much, Professor. Um, and that is Timothy. He has achieved immensely uh, at Makerere University, and he can't fail to let you know or Ugandans know about that. Okay. Um, I suppose, Professor, um, you should be able to respond to those. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Uh, let me begin with the question on... Uh, uh, the quality of the graduate. Of course, the person who is speaking, who is currently at the university, has had to go through two years of, of COVID-19. And uh, as I said, there are certain things that we could not do exactly the way we, use, we used to do them. There were uh, constraints in the, in the economy. Uh, we could not get certain uh, inputs, but we struggled as much as possible to make sure that the effects were minimized. So yes, uh, we, have, we have gone through a difficult time, but I doubt that uh, the student is, go, is leaving the university without doing all the practicals they were supposed to do. They could have been done maybe a, a little bit late. They may have done the practicals maybe using less uh, materials than they ordinarily do. But there is no way we graduate our student who is not ready to go out as a graduate of Makerere University. That one we rule out, and we cannot graduate that kind of graduate. Uh, on the issue of uh, uh, transcripts, as you are aware, of just uh, before COVID, uh, two years before COVID, we were producing transcripts even before the uh, students graduated. So people would come and pick their transcripts, and they would simply come to, to the ceremony, but they already had their transcripts. COVID affected our systems. First of all, because we, have, we still have to import these uh, transcript blanks from, the, from abroad, uh, our supplier let us down because their factory had been closed due to COVID-19. That affected the uh, early issuing of uh, transcripts for two years. This year, the problem that has caused a, a delay in the issuing of transcripts, although some transcripts were actually uh, were printed immediately after the graduation. Some colleges were affected, mainly because we are implementing a new academic uh, information system. Uh, the system, we were using it as people were studying how it, how it works. We are now over that, and uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, all transcripts uh, will be uh, ready within a very short time. We have just about 15% that uh, we are still uh, being produced because of the issues that I have talked about. So yes, we would like our, our, our graduates to get their transcripts even before they graduate. And that is, uh, our target actually is that people should get their transcripts before graduation and get their certificates on the graduation day. And that is our target. Yes. Thank you so much, Professor Barnabas Nawang. We want to thank you for the time. I, I want to congratulate the university for 100 years. It's not a small achievement. Mm -hmm. And probably what's going to be your parting shot, your concluding remark? Well, I, first of all, I, would, I want to thank uh, the people of Uganda for maintaining this university and maintaining it to be one of the best universities in the world. 
you have indeed sacrificed a lot the people of Uganda, the peasants, the, the common people, because Makerere is sustained through the taxes that you pay. This university belongs to you. And through the parliament which appropriates the money to make sure that Makerere can remain a top university in the world, you have actually sustained the university. I want to thank the parliament for always thinking about Makerere very seriously and making sure that the standards at Makerere do not fall but keep increasing. I want to thank the government because we get not all the money we would have wanted but we get within the resources that are available we are always prioritized and uh, we, ha we are now getting this research fund funding which, which other universities on the African continent can only dream about. But now we are getting it, and it is also being given to the other public universities. So I must thank the, the government for, for, for keeping Makerere at that level and helping us to keep those standards. Finally, of course, I want to thank our students and our staff, because they are the ones in the kitchen, uh, for upholding the integrity of the university uh, so, so that the university can be the pride of our people. And that can only happen if our students and the staff are doing what they are supposed to do, studying and researching, and they are doing it very well. I want to thank our mm. alumni who are concerned about the well-being of the university. And as we have said, you now have that opportunity to be actually individually involved in ensuring that the university becomes even greater through your donations. Just visit our website, www.mark.ac.ug, then you go to endowment, the section on endowment, and you'll get all the directions on how you can contribute to rebuilding and making Makerere even greater. Thank you so much, Professor Barnabas Nawangwe. For Makerere, a journey of 100 years began with a step, and that step was begun in 1922 with only 14 students. You have gone on to serve humanity across the world and as a country, Uganda, we are proud because we have you, Makerere University. And for you, if you are an alumni of Makerere, this is the moment to come back to your alma mater and perhaps add value to an institution that made you. We can only say congratulations. A hundred years is not a mean achievement. Good night and God bless you, God.